In this episode of Highlight Sundays, lawsuits, counterfeiting, and ebooks. Hello and welcome back to Highlight Sundays. It is the 19th week of 2014 and here are your highlights. We start off with one of the biggest things that has been going on this week. It has been taking places like Reddit by Storm. This article comes from Ask Technica and is entitled Router Company That Threatened a Reviewer Loses Amazon Selling License. So actually this has been a really long story which I'm going to attempt to summarize for you and well, basically it goes a little something like this. A person posted a negative review regarding a product on their Amazon selling page and well, in that particular review they allege a number of things. For example, they are accusing the company of artificially inflating their number of positive reviews. They also claim that the product listed there was actually the same as a different, cheaper and you know, less branded product. So essentially what happens after that is that the company actually sent a legal letter to this person and threatened them with legal action if they didn't actually remove the review, which the company deemed as libelous. So when this fact became known, there was quite the explosion of interest around the internet regarding, you know, a big company suing a person reviewing a product. Clearly, the huge objection with the actions taken by the company was the fact that you know, instead of going for a more subtle route to achieving what they want, they jump straight into actually sending a legal letter, which, you know, is a pretty big reaction to say the least. So instead of taking a side, I'm just going to very objectively tell you what I think about interactions on the internet in general. And that is everything you say, everything you do has a consequence. Even if in this case, the reaction that this person has provoked is indeed you know, a gross overreaction, it still doesn't change the fact that, you know, things you do online can come back and bite you in the butt. I think the real takeaway for all of us is the fact that what we do on the internet, what we say on the internet, is something we have to be accountable for. And I think it's pretty good advice to live by in the sense that, well, if you watch what you say, then you won't offend people. It's really as simple as that. So as far as I'm aware, this particular case is still developing. We don't have a proper conclusion to the story yet. So, well, we'll see how things go. Of course, as you would expect, the company has found themselves in quite a bit of trouble. Amazon actually dropped their license because they were not supposed to track a user through their reviews. And now that they've made a bad name for themselves, I don't see that being a very good omen for their business. So unfortunately, well, they're suffering pretty badly at this point as well. If anything new is added to this story, I will update you as we go along. But for now, enough of that, let us move on to the next article. Our next article comes from The Atlantic and is entitled, How Inkjet Printers Are Changing the Art of Counterfeiting Money. Now, this article is pretty interesting in the sense that not only do they talk about, well, you know, counterfeiting and you know, how to tell that whether cash you have is genuine or not, you know, all that usual stuff, they actually also talk about some techniques that people are using with inkjet printers today. The particular one that caught my eye was actually one involving how a person actually took, you know, actual $5 bills and they actually used different ways and means to erase that to get a blank piece of paper and then they printed that through an inkjet printer to be bills of higher value, which I thought was a pretty innovative way of actually approaching this. Of course, the other usual methods are also discussed in this article. For example, things like, you know, just printing it on normal paper and trying to print the things that make it look like there are embedded watermarks or fibers. So yeah, definitely a very interesting read. And it's just interesting to see how, you know, consumer technology is playing a part in things like this. And so we move on once again, this particular article, which comes from Gizmodo, is actually one of the types of articles I really like. And it involves actually talking about past predictions about things that, you know, would be happening today. This particular article is entitled, Five Past Predictions on the Future of the Ebook. Now, these predictions don't actually date very far back. They are from the 80s, the 90s, even the early 2000s. And well, they tend to be a little bit more rational, 
though actually quite a bit more reserved as well, which, you know, it's actually a little bit surprising. One of the earliest of these predictions actually suggested the use of CDs, and well, that was before the days of being able to burn CDs, so they were talking about, you know, the huge cost involved with actually making a CD. So that's actually pretty interesting to see. So yeah, actually, it is quite a revelation to think about the fact that a CD was originally meant to be a portable thing, and now, well, you don't see people carrying CDs around. If you, like me, are interested in, you know, this kind of past predictions, then you probably like this article. So do head down to the video description, you can check out 5 different predictions that happened over the course of 20 years or so. Definitely worth checking out and comparing that to the progress of ebook readers today. And right before we wrap up today's episode, let us move on to take a look at our recommendation of the week. This particular article comes from Lifehacker and is entitled, Versus compares tech side by side. So we've actually looked at Versus before in, I don't know, one of the 2012 episodes of Highlight Sundays. Basically back then, Versus was a site where you can enter in the names of two different phones, the specifications will come up, and you can compare the two. Today, the app has grown so much bigger than what it used to be. Now you can even compare things like CPUs, different smartphone apps, you know, headphones, things like that. You're no longer confined to just comparing phones. By the looks of things, you are also not just comparing spec sheets anymore. Now, queries with Versus will also pull up user submitted entries that compare the two things you wanted to compare. So the engine has definitely grown to be a lot more powerful than what it used to be. So yeah, if you're ever in the need of comparing two tech related things, almost any type of tech related thing, you might want to check out Versus. It will actually give you a pretty well-rounded comparison of the two. Anyway, that's about it for this episode of Highlight Sundays. I just want to give a very quick shout out. This morning I just checked and I realized that we've hit 3,000 subscribers. So thank you very much to every one of you for your continuous support. And yeah, I hope you hang around. I hope, well, you enjoy the content that is to come. But yes, that is pretty much it for this episode of Highlight Sundays. As always, thank you so much for watching. You're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612 TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.